Morning. So a buddy of mine and I have been taking uh, projector style TVs apart for me to get the Fresnel lenses out of them so I can make a solar oven and a solar cooker. And while we were doing that, we also uh, took the magnifying glasses out of the projectors themselves. And I decided I'd make some pouches. And uh, somebody gave me a big roll of uh, blue analdehyde. So I decided I would use this blue analdehyde. And I had seen, I think on Scouting Freeze uh, video of the first annual Southern Bushcraft Rendezvous, I think he had filmed uh, Parker Ridge and Manland making a pucker pouch. So I decided I'd make me a pucker pouch also. And keeping with, keeping with, Uh, Dave Canterbury's Greenwood series I decided for my magnifying glass pouch that I would make a wood button and a wood uh, bead for it and uh, I made a video already on making this pouch here and unfortunately somewhere along the line in my computer it got lost but anyway and what I like about using this this analdehyde is it's got a real soft uh, velvety type uh, liner inside of it which will help protect the magnifying lenses and what I, all I did was use the toggle type system where the piece of leather goes over the button the wooden button and it tightens and loosens like that as you can see it just slides up and down and I put a sleeve in it because inside here I have two magnifi magnifying lenses I have one glass glass this is the glass one I have one glass and one plastic lens in it and I don't know if you can see see on here the it's pretty strong it don't take no time to to light a fire with this glass one. This plastic one's kind of kind of uh, it's kind of hard to start. I can I can get an ember, but I can't actually get a fire started with this plastic one. Now the Fresnel lenses, they're so huge. It's they come out of a 72 inch TV. They're so huge. I'm gonna cut them down so they're a little bit more manageable and put them in a frame and put them on a actual uh, mount. So that way I can keep the uh, keep the uh, sun rays uh, adjusted but anyway yeah this 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 glass one works pretty good and you can see the size of them we had a whole bunch of these my buddy he uh, he flea market so he took them with him I think he's gonna try to sell them for like 25 cent or 50 cent down at the flea market and he took I kept two Fresnel lenses two of the big Fresnel lenses and he took the rest of them I don't know what he's gonna do with them but anyway to get on with this, all I did was sew this stuff inside out, and I put a sleeve inside. The sleeve sleeve slides in and out, and I made the case big enough that it would fit both of these. Plus, if I ever wanted to, I could put a couple uh, Altoids tins in it. But uh, yeah, you can see it works pretty good. They slide in and out good, and just put the toggle switch or a toggle toggle on it pull it tight I did uh, I did sew this button on a little bit tight but anyway there you go and that's that now let's say uh, I think it was Mark scouting free did the uh, did the video on making the, the pucker pouch uh, I think it was Parker Ridge brought his leather leather craft stuff and it showed Manland actually making one of the pucker pouches. I really like the idea how uh, of, of how Pucker or Parker Ridge had talked about making these holes in this pucker pouch. He said, start off with one, you know, an inch in, half an inch in, or whatever. 
flip it over, do it half, put another hole, flip it around, put another another hole in, flip it around, put another hole in, and then keep doing that going around, and then till you get get you know like six or eight holes, then just go ahead and space them out evenly in between each other. And also he explained the idea of using paracord instead of using leather lace. Leather lace would would catch on this, I can tell you that. And uh, so I thought that was a pretty good idea. This one's still got to be adjusted some. And I did put put like a cord lock on there. So in that way, pull it pull it tight. And you'll see that it, it's slowly getting shaped right. Now this uh, Naga hide is not going to form the same as what leather would form. But it still works okay. Um, and of course you got the long lace. But yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, and I had all this anaga hide, and I thought I would make that. And in keeping with that, I had to go. I had to buy some some hole punches. The hole punch I had wouldn't punch through that anaga hide, so I had to get some single single punches. I think I paid eight dollars for these on Amazon. They're sharp. They work. They're they're cheap ones. I used to have a whole whole uh, leather craft workshop. But uh, I sold the whole shop, all kit and caboodle, books, leather, dye, everything, all at one time to some young kid on the other side of town that was wanting to learn leather craft. I just got bored. I got fed up with it, making uh, leather stuff because a lot of people don't understand it takes time. If you want custom leather, it does take time to make make it. And I'll show you some of my real old stuff that I had made in the past and some of my used stuff in another video later on eventually I'm gonna get around to doing it but yeah I just got got tired it just got to be too too much work for me and I lost quite a bit of money on a couple saddles that I made and uh, and that really really you know kind of upset me and let me see another thing that I person purchased recently is some kind of a novelty thing uh, Fresnel lint, I mean a uh, Fresnel CM rod. Uh, it's just like a little mini survival survival kit type deal. Got the whistle right here. Now it's pretty cheap. Like I say, it's a novelty type thing. The whistle does work. It's got your little SOS stuff right here on the you know, the signals and everything. It's got your uh, Alpine uh, rescue signal up here. Uh, also, it's got like uh, airborne signals, ground ground to air signals on here. It's got a little little light. I don't know if you can see this or not, but yeah, it's got a little light right there. The light I had to put back together. Got a compass at the end, end right there. And uh, the light I did have to, I had to do some work on this this light. And all it does is pulls apart. And on the scraper, it's got little centimeter markings, or and got an inch marking on on there. And inside inside this little case right here, let me see if I can get it open. Well, I may not be able to get it open with with it tied like this, but inside the the case right here, it's got a block of magnesium in it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it off like this. But anyway, there's a block of magnesium in here for you to scrape off, and you can see that the uh, the ferrule rod does does work pretty good. Let me see if I can find the part that I already tested. Yeah, this cord gets in the way. Let's see, I got a. Well, again on tape, it's going to prove me wrong. <laughs> okay, you can see it throws pretty good sparks. But, anyway, that was just something else I picked up. And I'm going to put another another video on the end of this. And all all that video is, is showing, showing me punching holes, how I punch the holes in the pucker pouch. And... I'll talk to y'all later and be adding another video probably later on today. And talk to y'all later.
Have a good day. Bye. That was a close one, wasn't it?
It's a piece of chair vinyl that uh, I found about three three yards of it in the trash. And I can't see me wasting my leather, my suede, on making something that uh, I'm probably not going to carry anyway. I'm just making it just to be making it. But uh, no more than a tender pouch. One of the pull up tender pouches that you see everybody, a lot of people carry. You know, once it's all bunched up, it comes up like this. But uh, anyway, I'll show it to you when I get done. Uh, no big deal. And uh, the way I seen to punch these holes was uh, I watched the guys that, that were at the, uh, let me see if I can get this right, the first annual Southern Bushcraft Rendezvous videos were showing, uh, they were they were down there making some, I know the guy that, I, that was making it was uh, Manland, and I apologize, can't remember who took their leather stuff and showed them how to make them, and I apologize for that, I just know it was at the Southern First annual Southern Bushcraft Rendezvous. Anyway, I'll show it to you when I get done with it. And uh, like I say, this is all just a menagerie of, of videos I'm making. Just to be making videos, basically, and to show y'all, catch y'all kind of up on what I'm doing. Or Brandy. She had to come out here and see what was going on. And anyway, talk to y'all later. Got some more stuff to put on this one video.